السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس مرسی اینڈ بلیسنگس آف گاڈ بی اپن یو دس از اے نیو پریزنٹیشن فرام ڈبلیو 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 ڈاٹ سینٹرل ڈیش ماس ڈاٹ کام اینڈ دا ہمبل ہارٹ یوٹیوب چینل دس از اے شارٹ پریزنٹیشن بیکاز آئی ایم ہیونگ سم مائک ایشوز آئی ہوپ یو گیس کین ہیئر می اباؤٹ مائی تھاٹس آن دس امیریکن فلیگ برننگ ایونٹ ریسنٹلی ہیئر ان واشنگٹن ڈی سی سو دا ایونٹ واز دی پرائم منسٹر آف اسرائیل نتن یاہ واز وزٹنگ امیریکا اینڈ ون آف دا ایونٹس دیٹ ہی واز گن ڈو ہی واز گن ایڈریس اے جوائنٹ سیشن آف یو ایس کانگریس اینڈ سینٹ اینڈ آئی بلیو ہی آئی دا ایکول دا ریکارڈس اور ایکسیڈ اینڈ بیکیم دا ہائیسٹ بیسکلی آف اینی فورن لیڈر ایڈریسنگ اے جوائنٹ سیشن اٹس اے فورتھ ٹائم آئی بلیو ہی واز ایڈریسنگ اٹ بٹ اٹ واز کمنگ ٹو اے پوائنٹ ویئر آل سائز آف دا پولیٹیکل اسپیکٹرم ویدر یو ان دا رائٹ سینٹر مڈل وٹ ایور ور because of enormous public pressure and i can tell you that right now from what is happening on the streets here in america they were skipping this event to the point where politico which is a a, a very well known um you know uh, online uh, media organization in america said netanyahu washington gives israeli leader the cold shoulder and this kept going on and on vp harris who is probably going to become the nominee for the Democratic Party in the elections in 2024, she skipped it. And the reason this is significant is because in the American system, the vice president, she heads the uh, the Senate. Okay, So as a protocol, if Netanyahu was giving a speech, she would be sitting right behind him. And she skipped the session. Not only she did, but Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, who's going to be also standing in the elections in 2024 in a few months' time, uh, he also decided to skip it. So both parties, vice pres presidents, did not attend it. Biden had COVID. Trump is not a member of Congress or Senate, so he couldn't attend it. So this was, and this is something that caught my eye from the Israeli media and the Jerusalem Post, where they said that over 70 Democrats and one Republican skipped Netanyahu address to the Congress. By the way, I think there are some other Republicans as well, uh, and but nevertheless, it's a, it's a large number. So the American media, as I'm saying, uh, you know, this is, this is huge. On the streets in America, you see people, you know, um, here in Washington, elsewhere, etc. You see people, random people, you go shopping at Walmart and you see you know people at the customer service desk etc wearing you know palestine uh, bands on their wrists who are not muslims right uh, so this is becoming huge in america um to the point where vox said has netanyahu finally lost america so as i as i'm saying this is a reaction which is coming from all spectrums of the political divide then there were thousands Uh, filling Washington to protest against Netanyahu's coming to America and so also his addressing of the joint session. All of this was going on. And by the way, uh, what happens to these protests? I know that, you know, a lot of Muslims go there. They spend their own money. They go spend their own time. Sometimes families and kids also go there. They make preparations to make a point. The entire point of these protests in favor of the Palestinian people or in against the brutality that Israel is afflicting on the Palestinians is to raise awareness of the plight of the Palestinians, to do political outreach, that people come back into their cities and their communities, they reach, uh, reach out to their local political leaders, their member of Congresses, their senators, etc. Uh, so this is a very structured thing. It's not just about protest. This is not about making a scene. This is about shining a light on Israeli atrocities on the innocent Palestinian civilians, children, babies, women, etc. So everything in America was moving in a, in a singular direction where everybody was noticing how everybody's snubbing Netanyahu and then what happened. At one of the events, American flag burning occurred. And then immediately the next day, Vice President Harris, she issues this statement on Twitter. She said, yesterday at Union Station in Washington, D.C., we saw despicable acts of unpatriotic protests and dangerous hate-filled rhetoric. I condemn any individuals associated with the brutal terrorist organization Hamas, which has vowed to annihilate the state of Israel and kill Jews. Pro-Hamas graffiti and rhetoric is abhorrent and we must not tolerate it in our nation. I condemn the burning of the American flag. The flag is a symbol of our highest ideals. And as a nation and represents the promise of America to never be desecrated in that way. I support the right to peacefully protest, but let's be clear. Anti-Semitism, hate and violence of any kind have no place in our nation. So the vice president 
as usual, you know, the, the media and even CNN and all the mainstream media was talking about the, the uh, shining a light because of the protests that are going on throughout this country against the atrocities of Israelis. And then one event, it gives a chance for everybody to focus their attention on it. I am going to play that video in a little bit where you can see what's going on. In this video, you can clearly see, you know, people chanting uh, Takbir Allahu Akbar and it's coupled with bad language. I'm not saying the same people, but other people are saying it. You see US flag burning, you see profanity. So you see losing, losing focus. So from my experience, what I see is this is anarchy and this is anarchist people looking for attention who are doing this kind of stuff. And there are, you know, when you look at social media, there are people who are saying, you know, genuine people are saying, listen, this was not the point of the protest. The protest was to bring attention to the atrocities being committed by Israel. Yet there were some people, let some, you know, there, there are two opinions on this. Some people are saying they're planted by, you know, the intelligence agencies or whatever. Uh, others are saying they're useful idiots. Allah Ta'ala knows best. God knows what is the truth in this. What I can tell you straight away is that particular event, right? Turn the attention of the country and gave the, those people an excuse who are supporting the barbarity and criminality of Israel. The, it gave them an excuse to focus on this particular event. May Allah forgive us. Babies have, are being killed. Children have been killed. Women have been killed. You know, civilian areas are being bombed. B civilian buildings and shelters are being destroyed. Hospitals and schools are being targeted. But it gave the people one particular focus. They're saying... Here you go. These people are burning American flags and using, you know, uh, using Hamas related, uh, you know, graffiti and slogans and so on and so forth. I know for a fact that those who go to these protests, you know, I know they, you know, they spend their own money. They travel hundreds of miles to go to Washington, D.C. to do this kind of stuff with their families. And, you know, they, they try to talk to their children about atrocities, which is afflicting the Muslim Ummah. And this completely derails it. So these people who are coming in there, you know, partying and dancing around, or I would say prancing around, right, using profanity, this is not the purpose of these protests at all. And this derails it. So I have no evidence to say whether the people who are doing this are plants by the intelligence or planted by the intelligence agencies or they're simply useful idiots, but their actions are despicable and pathetic. Why would you do that in America, in, in, the, in the capital of America, in Washington, D.C., in the glaring, uh, you know, uh, view of all the cameras and start burning flags and things like that? Allah Ta'ala knows best. The, the people who are trying to to highlight the criminality of Israel, distance themselves from it straight away. There were many people who were at that. And, you know, I follow their Twitter accounts. I don't want to put that in description. I don't want to display it. But they're clearly saying that they did not see this. They don't know who these people are. And by the way, this person is, you know, the one who's burning flags, etc. You know, his face is fully uncovered. It is easy to identify this person, who that is, where did they come from, what happened, all this kind of stuff. But this is ridiculously pathetic all of the you know the, the hard work the focus the dedication the sacrifice of thousands of human beings muslims and non-muslims are like good human beings who are appalled by what they're seeing happening in palestine their good work is being nullified by a few of these people again i i have no evidence to say that they are planted by by intelligence agencies i do not know right um I, I, and I, it could be that they're innocent and they're just idiots, but whatever the case may be, it has derailed a very good opportunity to put the focus on the atrocities being committed by Israel. Now, watch the clip next, and you clearly see any Muslim with you know an ounce of common sense knows that this they would not be Muslims who would be doing something like that. You know, it, it, Allah Akbar chants coupled and 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 interspersed with profanity, bad language, flag burning, dancing, prancing. This is absolutely, utterly ridiculous, and this is shameful. And it is unfortunate that the good work of thousands of people has been usurped and given, you know, the Zionists and those who back the Zionists in this country, America, given them an excuse to focus on this event instead of what they should have been focusing on. Jazakallah khairan. Watch this clip next.
Oh!